Live from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE. Covering DockerCon 2016. Brought to you by Docker. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Brian Gracely. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Seattle, Washington for DockerCon 2016. It's the SiliconANGLE Media's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, Brian Gracely. Our next guest is the CEO of Docker, Ben Goloff, been on CUBE alumni many times. Welcome back. Thank you for having us this year again at DockerCon. Oh, my pleasure, it's great to have you here. More space this year, 4,000 plus people, bigger convention, Moscone West next year. You went from the hotel to we, here. We, we, yeah, so we outgrew the hotel and Moscone's closed, so uh, <laughs> you know it's either here or Vegas, and I spend too much time in the Sands yeah. Convention Center as it is. It's so. a nice place, good a nice place, place, great yeah. venue. Really impressive, the crowd size. Yeah, yeah. Just go back three years ago, first uh, DockerCon, 500 people or so. It was so. two years ago, actually. Two years ago. Two years ago, it was uh, 500 people, last year was 2,000, uh, now 4,100. And you know, and you know, one, two, two uh, KPIs, key performance indicators to me, yeah. uh, I'll share with you, it's kind of a cube uh, person goes to all the events. One, yeah. the kind of attendance yeah. and booth uh, profile. Yeah. IBM, Docker, Cisco, yeah, yeah. Google, and then uh, two, how many VCs I see in the hallways. Oh, okay. So, okay. <laughs> so, so that means you have commercialization at a tier one level sure, in sure. business, and then two, you have VCs and a lot of entrepreneurship. And that really kind of encapsulates the dynamic that you guys have right now, yeah. which is really impressive. And for the folks watching is that having that magic of entrepreneurial activity combined with the explosive commercialization mm -hmm. on the business front yeah. is really lightning in a bottle. So yeah. I got to ask you, as someone who's the, the, mm -hmm. the chief of the, of the business uh, for Docker Inc., yeah, sure. you have the Docker ecosystem, how do you balance that? Because that is really a tricky balancing act to keep right. that fostering innovation and right. commercialization. Yeah, I mean, it, it is very tricky, right? Um, and you know, I probably, probably worth mentioning uh, just some, some statistics since you mentioned the VCs. Uh, we understand there have now been over 100 startups funded uh, in the Docker ecosystem. And if you search on GitHub, you'll find 95,000 projects with uh, Docker in the title. So clearly there's a lot of innovation that's happening uh, in the small company level, a ton of, yeah. ton of innovation and partnership and, and co-opetition happening with, with the larger guys. Um, you know, at some level, I think we just try and stay true to our roots and we say, listen, if we build amazing products uh, that serve the needs of developers and serve the needs of operators, and if we can democratize the use of containers uh, and now democratize the use of orchestration uh, and adoption in the enterprise, a lot of great business will come our way and in the process, I think if we have a good platform, yeah. hopefully the ecosystem makes $10 for every dollar we've done and that's great. Well, you guys are taking the VMware Play, but we had Mariana Trestle yeah. on earlier. She yeah. shaped that um, program sure. when it really needed help. She took it in the right direction. Yeah. But the interesting thing about Docker is that uh, VMware had a complete changeover in the ecosystem at that time, which is why they had some sure. you know, challenges on how they managed and they eventually found their groove swing. Docker doesn't have that problem. You have a huge winning formula on the right. DevOps now going mainstream, right. application developers using Docker. But now the challenge shifts over to IT operations, sure, sure. which is now becoming DevOpsized or becoming right, right. more right. ops dev. Ops dev. And yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. kind of like blocking and tackling you know, enterprise stuff, compliance, security, identity. Sure. I mean, a lot sure. of in between the toes details of stuff. Right, right, right. And so, and so a lot of that we're trying to, uh, trying to deal with, right? Um, so we're trying to make Docker easy to deploy, but also uh, easy to procure, easy to train, do a good job at change management do a good job at understanding the fact that enterprises have a lot of different developers and a lot of different uh, roles to play and a lot of different compliance issues. Um, so some of the holes we fill ourselves, some of them get filled by our ecosystem. We have deep partnerships with uh, systems integrators like Booz Allen uh, and Accenture. We have deep partnerships with uh, systems vendors like uh, HP, deep partnership with Microsoft, relationships with all the cloud vendors. Um, and of course, a wide variety of different people doing everything from security to networking. Are you happy with the global SI, global system integrators right now? You mentioned a few of them. There's yeah. obviously, you know, you got Deloitte, Accenture, Capgemini, sure. PwC, they all go on and on. They're looking to really differentiate right now. Right. And how do you view your relationship with them? Well, I mean, I, th I think our, our interests are pretty well aligned, right? I mean, Docker, Docker enables organizations to tran uh, transform themselves, but we do it in a pretty incremental way, right? You can start with a single data center, you can start with a single app, you can start with a, a single organization, but you know, if, you're, if you're a global SI, you want to help people transform their business operations, you also want to help them move from one technology set to another technology set. 
Um, and uh, so as a result, it makes sense, right? They, uh, they can get professional services revenue, we can sell Docker, and together it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, you know, last year, I remember you were talking in the keynote, you said, you know, I'm here because I, I wanted to be part of something that's going to you know, make a huge impact right. on, on the world. This year, you're talking about democratizing a bunch of things. Right. Like, you guys do tons of meetups. I mean, you're all over the place. So you right, joked right. around, you want to be in Siberia and Greenland. And, and Greenland, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't say I want to be. If you want to set, <laughs> uh, <laughs> set up a meetup group, that's fine. How, how much do you get feedback from developers that say, you know, I feel more empowered. I feel more free to do things. I mean, like, what do you, what's the, What's the temperature of developers these days? I mean, it, 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 it's amazing. This, this really has been a transformation for developers. I mean, if, if you think about it, you know, a few years ago, developers spent the bulk of their time not writing amazing code, not experimenting. Instead, they were worrying about, you know, dependency issues and, you know, why is it working on my laptop but not working in production? Or how am I going to get it to work in production? Or how am I going to scale? Or how do I deal with all these issues of, of distribution and production? And, you know, now they've been liberated and not only been liberated in terms of what they write, but also been uh, really empowered in the sense that they can be a lot more collaborative. And the way you tend to build an application with Docker is you sort of assemble it like you're building something out of Legos, right? So I can uh, borrow a great uh, uh, fundamental building block that uh, is built by my colleague in one area, another by getting it off the shelf. And so as a result, we're hearing tons and tons of innovation. You know, I spoke this morning about the fact that this DockerCon was kind of different. Not only do we have people talking about things like doing protein folding to solve Parkinson's uh, using Docker, but it's 13 year olds and 10 year olds who are doing it. it, it it's absolutely amazing. And the cloud gives them that, that canvas, that power base, the yeah. compute. Um, so I got to ask you the business model question, being the chief sure. executive officer, you got to look at the sure. 20 mile stair, you got to look at the, yeah, yeah. the current execution, then you got to figure out again, mm -hmm. 3D chess, whatever metaphor you want to use. At some point, I'm sure, pretend I'm Jerry Chen. Ben, we, do we, when do we do hey, a business really model? Good, <laughs> yeah, I need yeah, some more yeah. cash. I'll be yeah. Jerry Chen. Ben, we need a business model. Yeah. So I know there's pressure, so I'm not going to yeah. say, is, is there pressure? Of course there's pressure. Yeah. But timing's critical. I mean, sure. you know, and there's certain growth aspects of yeah, yeah, the, yeah. your company. When do you guys start really starting getting down and dirty in the business model, or have you, or? Oh, we have, it? we have. I mean, so uh, last year we were selling, selling uh, commercial support. Uh, in February, we launched Docker Data Center, uh, which is our commercial management plane, uh, which basically enables organizations who have lots of developers, creating lots of apps, using lots of containers on lots of servers, to manage that whole supply chain. And that's structured as a subscription that you know, grows based a off SaaS. of- Yeah. Uh, no, it's actually not SaaS, right? right? We, have, we, have, uh, we have SaaS, but we also have uh, behind the firewall. So if you're running Docker on hundreds of servers behind your firewall, or on hundreds of servers in the cloud, or some mix, we really don't care. We make the same amount of money regardless, um, but what we are seeing is that uh, you know, we've now got over 150 customers for that. We've got uh, 10,000 or so customers for our cloud business, and the people that we sold two quarters ago uh, have gone from having you know, 40, 50 nodes to you know, 100, in some cases 1,000, so we've gotten customers going from five-figure annual deals to six-figure annual deals, um, and channels starting to push us, so the business model is there, it's growing. You know, we still spend more money every month than we bring in, yeah. but the curves are- Well, you're funded are, for growth, so that's- But the curves, the curves are going in the right direction, right? So revenue's growing a lot faster than expenses, and we think we can cross, have those lines cross uh, well before we need to raise money again. So you think you'd be cash flow positive before the need to do a financing. Right. So your fume date, as they say in VC land, yeah. is way out there, you're going to cross right. over. Right, right, right. Okay, right. On, and any other, um, on the horizon, business model opportunities, and this is a nice baseline, okay, great. Because sure. you don't want to be mindful of being too dogmatic on the revenue model, certainly. You right. got to get the cash flow positive. Right. There's always another round of funding, technically, if you guys needed it. Sure. I'm sure they're not uh, going to leave you hanging, hanging out there. Right. But as the market changes, do you worry about the shifting sands of the competitive landscape, or the partner landscape, or just the industry landscape? Uh, well, I mean, look, I mean, I think it always pays to be, <laughs> you know, paranoid at some level, and I, try to find some healthy balance between something in between like Andy Grove and Howard Hughes <laughs> uh, in terms of my <laughs> level of paranoia. But um, look, I think that we've set ourselves up with a fundamentally, uh, with a fundamentally valuable service um, that will do well whether customers move to the cloud, whether they stay on mm -hmm. premise, whether they're hybrid. We will do well whether they migrate quickly from more legacy apps to uh, next generation apps, whether they stay with legacy apps. Um, we'll do well with big data. Um, we will do well uh, with the move to You guys devices. are doing, first of all, we're big fans, so you know, yeah, we, yeah. 
we love you guys, and we think you'll do well no matter what. So yeah, the question yeah. is how big? And the only thing I can use as a proxy, and we were talking about yeah, this yeah. off before camera this morning, was Microsoft bought LinkedIn for 26 billion. Sure. That's a Rolodex, it's a, you know, I guess it's a job okay. uh, board. Yeah. Um, you can argue that data's there, I think it is. But 26 billion, Docker's got to be at least worth I mean, if LinkedIn's <laughs> worth 26 billion, 26 billion, if LinkedIn's yeah. worth 26 billion, I mean, you got to argue, I mean, with all the success you have, I mean, you might not have all the subscribers, the consumer business, sure. but you got 95,000 projects, right. probably a zillion machine learning engineers at four million a pop, yeah, uh, yeah, average yeah. street value right now. Yeah. You got to go. No, 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 I mean, look, they just I, I, think, I think it's huge. I think we're touching almost every aspect of, of IT um, and uh, really are a catalyst to some of the most critical transformations. Um, you know, I constantly remind people at Docker that, look, we are a zero billion dollar company right now. <laughs> we'll be double that size <laughs> next year, right? Well, you guys are a billion um, value right now. I think well, well, if you're talking valuation, yeah, but if you're talking, talking revenue, yeah. uh, you know, it's a zero billion dollar revenue True. business. Nice, but uh, you know, we haven't hit that mark yet. Um, and, and honestly, I think that we need to prove our value every day. We need to build a, build a solid uh, business revenue and um, well, I will admit that I did notice that, that $26 billion uh, uh, acquisition. Honestly, I think if you're going to build a great business, you don't focus on the exit, you don't run for the exit, yeah, right? yeah. you build a great business. Well, they had revenue, to be fair to LinkedIn, I'm just all joking aside, I love LinkedIn. The data was the value, so I yeah. got to ask you, see revenue you brought up is a good point. You got to get some revenue, put some numbers on the board. Sure. There's obviously, I th probably be some other opportunities to look at Monster, emerging yeah. business models as they, as they surface themselves to you guys, as you guys continue yeah. your progression. But sure. is there a KPI that you look to internally, strategically, mm -hmm. that is core to Ben Golop and the team, where you say, this is a core kernel of a, no, of a, of a KPI? Is it, is it the number of projects? Is it the um, yeah. growth in the ecosystem? Can yeah, you, I mean, I mean there's there a insight. lot of things we, we, you know, we, we probably track too many me uh, metrics, but um, you know, we certainly top have three. metrics that, that uh, sorry, you said take top three? three. What top, top three. three. Um, so for me, I think it's the number of developers who are using Docker. Um, uh, I think it is the number of nodes under management uh, because that drives uh, uh, drives workloads. And um, uh, what, what would the third one be? Um, I, and revenue. Revenue. <laughs> revenue. <laughs> well, we got to work on oh, that. Oh, I one. forgot about that one. Okay, if Jerry were here, I would have said revenue <laughs> right off the bat. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm no, but honestly, I, th I think revenue is a is a uh, is to some extent a trailing indicator. Right? The more developers we have, the yeah. more enterprises we get into, the more workloads they create. The number of uh, workloads that are under management, the number of engines that are under management yeah. drive the subscription business. Well, you have a critical mass business. I mean, my yeah. analysis would be, yeah. if you go too early to try to force the business model, yeah. you got to have it out there and de nurture it and develop yeah. it. But if you go too far into it, you really could blow the strategic aspect of the flywheel and the critical mass that you guys are getting right now. Absolutely, and, and so, you know, what has been really exciting for us and, and wonderful is that the, you know, Docker tends to come into the organization, obviously, through open source. Um, people adopt it. It's very low friction for them, very low friction for us. Um, and, but what we see is people start building Docker, they get successful, and as you go from you know, one developer to many developers, <laughs> as from developer to operations, you go from one application to many applications, at some point there's a need to be able to manage it, and that's when we come in, and generally speaking, we get called, rather than uh, us having to do prospects. Brian, you want to get a question in? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was interesting, so last week yeah. there were a whole bunch of surveys that the various companies did, and sure. A lot of crazy, I mean, you guys are tons of crazy numbers, you know, billions of downloads. Yeah, yeah. But there was a bunch that were like, 75% of our applications run on Docker in production. And, yeah. and you would see people go, who are these people? Who are these right? people, yeah. And, and w which, what I'm trying to figure out is, you know, you, you just gave us some rough customer numbers, we won't yeah, take those yeah. for it. But who is the Docker buyer? Who is the Docker lighthouse? Like, wh who is it that some people know them intimately like you do, and some people go, I don't even know that they exist, like how, what does yeah, that look like? I mean, it, 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 it's somewhat hard to characterize it, because we, you know, we have everything from two-person startups all the way up to the largest financial institution, sure. uh, U.S. government, uh, the GSA uses Docker, um, you're going to hear people talking tomorrow, um, Goldman Sachs has come out publicly and said they're, they're, uh, they, you know, they are, have a goal to move 25% of their applications over to Docker this year, and 90%, uh, you know, uh, ultimately. Um, you have major manufacturers using Docker, you have major retailers using Docker, uh, and of course, you know, the large web companies using Docker, yeah. and so, look, I don't know whether the, you know, the percentage of enterprises using Docker is 20% or 70% 
or something in between, but what I do know is this is no longer an early adopter technology. This has moved yeah. into the you know, early mainstream, yeah. and uh, yeah. that's DevOps both a wonderful system. thing and it's also a scary thing for us. You know, yeah, I mean, if, if nothing else, it says the people responding are passionate enough that they're trying to push a whole lot of what they're doing in that direction. It's, yeah, you know, you and know, it's, it's and driving it's really, what they do. It's been uh, you know, really gratifying for us. For example, you know, I think like a year and a half ago, people would have said, oh, you know, I'm interested in Docker, but you know, if I use it, I'll use it despite my concerns about security. Now they're saying, I'm adopting Docker because it will help me address my security concerns. It's fundamentally more secure. It's not if Docker, it's how to, and when. It's, it's not only how, but Docker will actually make them more secure. Yeah. The fact that you can deploy something quickly, know what you're deploying, and fix it if something's wrong, that makes you actually much more secure as an organization, not, not more vulnerable. Yeah, it's been phenomenal growth. I think the DevOps has won. DevOps I mean, won, DevOps yeah. has won in the enterprise. Yeah. And that's gone mainstream. Certainly hearing HP talk about it. Yeah. The issue is how the operations 2.0 is going to happen in IT. Yeah. And that's certainly changing radically. And that's interesting, that brings up the kind of like the question on the business model again. And I asked Mariana about this when she was kind of, and she brought up a great answer. She said, the key for us is integration yeah. points. Really being clear about what we want yeah. Docker to have as integration points right. and what's clearly established the ecosystem yeah. to what they do. Right. In other words, clear line of sight, swim lanes, whatever metaphor. Right. What are those in your mind? Because those are evolving in real time. Have you guys sat in a room and said, these are our key integration points that's going to drive our competitive advantage? Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Uh, what, to so stay away from basically if you're a partner? Sure. Um, look, I think that what has become very clear to us is that. Um, you know, obviously it's important for us to, uh, to be part of development and in the, in the new world order, right, uh, what gets developed uh, gets instantiated as a container or a group of containers and that has on it the information that lets you deploy it into operation. So, so that's a very clear uh, integration point that for us that's important, but it's also important for us to be there in traditional operations, right? Um, almost every large customer has a mix of traditional and hybrid and uh, traditional and next generation apps and traditional uh, and next generation infrastructure and, and cloud, right? So that for us having a, a deal with an HP, for example, HPE, for example, yep. where you know, every server that ships is uh, by default going to have Docker's commercial uh, engine uh, embedded and Docker commercial support available with a click of a button, that's hugely important. That's a revenue deal for you too, right? It's an, absolutely, it's a revenue deal for us, uh, both with the initial adoption as well as uh, any, uh, any incremental upsells. Um, and uh, you know, we're partnering with HP and their channel, uh, not only on commercial engine, but also on Docker's data center uh, management product, which is, which is nice. Um, we also have integration points with the major cloud providers. As you can imagine, we want people to be able to push a button, deploy Docker in a cloud, deploy it on-prem, and actually in both places. Um, we also are finding, interestingly enough, that there's sort of key integration points that enable us to work well with people's existing converged infrastructure, hyper-converged infrastructure, networking infrastructure, um, and, uh, and so as people are migrating, we're going to be part of it. Ben, great to have you on theCUBE, and thanks for your support. Um, uh -huh. Any more questions? No, I think it's fantastic. All Congratulations right. on all okay. the growth, and, and uh, we're excited to be here what's, again. What's going to be for day two tomorrow? What are we going to hear? So I think you know, day one was all about democratizing the use of containers, democratizing the use of orchestration. Uh, day two is really all about the enterprise, and how do you democratize, if you will, the adoption of Docker in a complex enterprise with all of the concerns that, uh, that the enterprises have. And it's always about democratization. Can we just say it's been democratized? Like, can we like use that? Well, you it think turns out you, you may have noticed that even well-established democracies occasionally have. <laughs> we need some democracy. Challenges. We need some democracy in our. Right, so the warriors yeah. lost. Trump might be a president of the United States. What the hell's going man, on? Stop you depressing know. me, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So, uh, yeah, no. So we, we we believe in democracy. We believe in uh, in evolution. Uh, we also believe in intelligent design, at least in terms of our yeah, products. Yeah, intelligent, open source, and transparent, too. Transparent. Final question, just give us some yeah. numbers, uh, head count, stats on the company, sure. key areas you're hiring in, yeah, just uh, to we're, see kind uh, of a C-level perspective. We're up to 250 people, uh, which feels big to us. In one not. building in San Francisco now, No, right? total, total in, the, uh, in the company. Okay. Uh, about 170 of them are in San Francisco. Uh, you know, at the first DoctorCon, we were 38 people, so uh, uh, we're growing fast, but you know, there are 3,000 people who work on Docker. Uh, most of them, of course, are outside the company, so. Great, and revenues? Uh, growing. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Greater you know, than zero, I don't less have than a billion. Sleep. <laughs> yes. Greater than zero, less than a billion. That's right. Well, you got the HP deal, I think it's very impressive. That's yeah, going to be yeah. good, and I think 
you're going to start to. I, I think yeah, you're going to start you're to gonna see hear more. about a lot of impressive commercial yeah. customers tomorrow. So that's, well, congratulations uh, that's on all your success. Thanks hey, for having thank us. Thank you so much. Thank you Live for here me. at DockerCon, this is the Cube. I'm Jeff Furrier, Brian Gracely. You watch on the Cube. We'll be right back. <laughs>